Welcome to Team Sports Entertainment, the podcast, your one-stop shop for mature sports dialogue. I am your host, Earl Tima, alongside my co-host, my unk, Alan Tima. Before we go any further, please subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, that's very important. Leave a comment, and also like the video. We appreciate all you out there. Happy holidays to you and yours. Hope you all resting up, you know, enjoying uh, your families. And most importantly, save your money. Save your money. <laughs> save your money. Yeah. For real, man. Um, five exciting games on Christmas Day in the NBA. Opening week. We're going to get right to it. We'll be starting with uh, the first game, 12 o'clock. We got the Pelicans and Miami Heat. Yeah. What you think about that? <laughs> so I ain't going to have a big night. Think so? I believe it's, again, I Bam, going to hold up to that contract. Mm-hmm. He's undersized. And Zion is in shape. And he, let, he, I mean, I don't see anything in that middle that's going to keep Zion from getting to that. I mean, he played bully ball if you have to. Yeah. And I just don't think that it's a bad matchup for Miami. I, that's just in my opinion. Not that Miami is not the – but that's the good thing about Miami. Miami always come to compete. Always. They always gonna. I mean, that's Pat Riley's squad. So you already know that. Now, they was in the final, so you know what I mean. They're gonna come to play, but off the top, I just look at it. I think Zion have a big night. That don't necessarily mean it's enough to get the win. That was my next question. Yeah. yeah. So then you got um another matchup over there that you gotta be watch. Is Ingram ready to take another step? Because Butler is going to come to play D. Yeah. I mean, Crowder, Crowder not being there is is it's going to be that's you know that's a big loss. Yeah. That's a big loss. Leadership on the defensive end. On the defensive end, Tenacity, I mean, yeah. he got he got bigs also. He, mm. he, I seen him guard fours and do a great job at it, and, and you're missing out on that. I, I, Iggy got to stop playing the old man game. <laughs> And he's gonna have to come. He has, he's gonna have to give them the energy that Crowder gave them. Yeah. yeah. He spoke on size early on with Zion. They also have Stephen Adams over there too. So it's another big in the middle. Yeah, that's what I mean. That that uh, makes it hard for Miami. I watched them in the preseason, and again, it's starting to sound like robots. Mm-hmm. It's only preseason, but that's the same problem that I saw when they matched up with them in in preseason. It was just um, New Orleans is just just appeared to be a little too big for them. But um, again, it's a Pat Riley team, and they lost that season opener. I believe that they're gonna come out real strong. The type of but the type of leader that Butler is, Miami be ready. All right. So yeah. you think they'll be ready, but you still have the Pelicans taking the W? No, so I just don't. said Butler will be ready. All right. But um, you said Zion would be ready too. So. Yeah, but Butler is he's in the finals, man. All right, no doubt. Experience matters. Yeah. You know what I mean? All right. So what what about the matchup at point guard? Because Avery Bradley is there now. And Lonzo is a great facilitator. Well, then again, I'm pretty much answering my own question because <laughs> thank you. Lonzo doesn't he doesn't pound the ball anyway, so he's gonna get it out of his hands into the right uh Right parties. At That's what's time. so unique about him as point yeah. guard, I and mean, what people don't understand. And you got to really understand the game to admire Lonzo Ball, you know, because everybody always looking for people that score twenty points, gonna gonna fill up the stat sheet and points, mm-hmm. but necessarily he's not gonna even get the assists. Mm-hmm. But what he the, he's gonna make the play that leads to the assists. You know, and, and that's what I love about Ball. His game is not a game where you're going to appreciate him at the end of the season. Yeah. And that might hurt him as far as when it's time to to be with contracts and stuff like that. But if you really understand the game, he, he's miss, missed. Prime example, as much as when LeBron came, when LeBron came over to the Lakers, we, um, we saw that. We felt that ball was, you know, let him go. We need AD. But then once he got AD, he was like, yo, it would be nice if ball was running the point right now because he, to me he would be the perfect point guard with someone like LeBron mm-hmm. if he can get more consistent with shooting the three. 
size, defense, and he makes those type of plays. He's more, more like if, if that energy on the defense that I seen him give, because it's more like a Caruso, which is better with passing and ball handling. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I get from him. So him matched up with uh, with Bradley. Well, well, Bradley. Do, do Bradley even start? It's yeah, not he doesn't start though. But I, I think. I mentioned his name because Spo is he's not one to stick to a player based on loyalty. Whatever's working, that's just what it's gonna be. Well, when you got that kind of weapon, you got that kind of weapon mm-hmm. with defense, with Bradley. I mean I, but but that's the thing with Bradley. Bradley is not gonna affect ball because ball is not holding on to the ball. Boom! If he get the ball, four or five seconds, necessarily the ball is out of his hands already. Mm-hmm. And so, is can you really slow him down no, for really. what he does? I don't think you can. It, it's when it's people think that it's it's slowing him down, but he's not really known in the NBA as a scorer yeah. because the plays he again. I'm not gonna repeat it. The same play, the plays he makes leads to plays that add to the stats you know so uh that that's not even a real matchup for me if you want to look at matchups you you're gonna have to move over to the shooting guards and the small forwards which we already mentioned with brad with 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 butler and ingram Mm -hmm. so shooting guards is that's who's gonna shut down those positions and that's great also when now you can add bradley in because he's gonna move over to any wing player that is a threat offensively. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, I agree with you on the Miami sense because um, I think New Orleans, if you look at their roster, they're lacking depth. Yeah. The starting lineup is not – they don't have a lot of shooting out there. You got Ball and Bledsoe in the backcourt. You pretty much play off both of them. Yeah. You have Ingram at the three, Zion, and then you have big Steven Adams at the five. I think Miami de- defensively, key in – take away the strengths and it'll be I wouldn't say an easy game but I think this matchup mm-hmm. pretty much is uh, in their favor. The chess move is definitely on Spolstra. Yeah. Spolstra is, and you mentioned it because you know we, we, we hear so much about the excitement of some of these young teams and it sounds like they're deep. To me it appeared that New Orleans was deeper last year yeah. Than they are now because when we actually studied and looked at their roster, uh, they you like, like again, this they, like you just said, they're not they're not that deep. So their top five, and I know you can, you can leave some of them in the game with some of the bench, but this 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 is a different type of season. Mm-hmm. And how many minutes? I know they're young, but how many minutes you gonna you gonna wet them? You can't wet them down. Yeah, cause I ain't played what thirty in the first game, right? But that's not bad. I mean, 30 minutes, that's not bad, you know, and especially him coming in shape this time, you know. So we'll see. Yeah. I don't know. It's, well, it's we, a 12 know, o'clock game, yeah. you know, and the energy even talking about this game is like, yeah, it's a 12 o'clock game uh, on Christmas Day, you know, and are people really going to – I know growing up in my household – 12 o'clock, we were still getting it in. It could have been 9 a.m. We were going to tune into a game. <laughs> yeah, but that, the, the game is not – I mean, it's a tune-up for real NBA fans. Mm-hmm. But even NBA fans at 12 o'clock, I don't – unless it's that great matchup. And th- that used to be the Knicks. Yeah. The Knicks used to always have that 12 o'clock game, right? They would play like and, Boston or Philly. And they were going to get those views because those Knicks fans was is loyal. Yeah, no, They're no. loyal. They're going to watch. But our, um, Miami fans is not loyal. And I don't know too many New Orleans home. Pelicans fans, you know. But Zion adds something different to it, so people want to yeah. watch him. New Millennium. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess we both going to take Miami in that game. I got Miami. Yeah, but you talked about a tune-up game or a snooze fest, you know what I mean? I think the second game, based on game one of uh, one of the team's performance, should have probably been the 12 o'clock game, and that's uh, Golden State versus Milwaukee. That no. comes on. That's the that second game. Sh- that shouldn't have been no, t- no, no 12 o'clock game. <laughs> that shouldn't have been. 
and no disrespect to Milwaukee because it's not Milwaukee. I, I I actually was, you know, Milwaukee started off slow in game one, but I saw their potential going into that third, into the third, into the fourth quarter, making that comeback. Um, it's just the, but most of it is still the same thing that we know it'd be good for the regular season. But I didn't see any changes. And again, it's the first game of the season. I didn't see anything different where Giannis is going to run it, run it, and get into the playoffs, and that's going to be a different phase because he's doing the same thing. He's getting the ball 20 feet from the basket, and he's going downhill. And I mean, playoffs, we know what's going to happen. They're going to build that wall, but. I, I like what I saw. Holiday to me was very impressive over there in that game, and um, Middleton same thing. And this is about chemistry and them coming together. I think it'd be it'd be something different. But it's not so much them I'm talking about; it's the opponent. I won't even mention that until I see something different from Steph and and and, and Golden State because you know I tried to I. I gotta be real, man, because I have my opinions, but at the same time, the dream teamers. No doubt. You know what I mean? And that's what I call you guys. That's what I, when we speak. That's what we call you guys, the dream teamers. Mm-hmm. And and when I think about, I I want to think about how you guys are thinking. That's why we need more comments so I can understand how you're thinking, so I can address some of your issues on here. But. Golden State, when I look at their roster, I mean, and what I saw, I'm very I was so disappointed and and I I over I probably overreact. No, I know I overreact. The reason why I knew I overreacted is because it's just the first game of the season and things can yeah. change, you know. But I'm not looking forward to seeing Golden State until maybe middle of the season. <laughs> I don't have time to take out my Christmas Day to watch Golden State if they're going to give me what I just saw in the first game, right? So now watching them, not watching them, but examining and looking, going back and looking at their roster because I, I, I really did to see what Steph is actually working with. And what I saw, it wasn't that bad. I mean, nah. I'm telling you, it's not that. You know why? How? how why? Again, like I, like I, my rants. Well, based on his skill set. Well, see, I, that's the thing. I have to remember his skill set, but it kind of it's like faded. His what I know his skill set is is faded to me. The reason why it's faded to me is because, again, so many people have put him on a, a superstar status where he's better than the the, the Hardens. The Westbrooks, the LeBrons, the, the Kevin, the Dames, the CP3s. The, the, the question was asked several times. If you were starting a team and the list was up with those some of those same names that I put up, who would you start? Who would be the first player that you want to start to build your team around? And I watched for the for several years, people say. Steph Curry over all of those names. So now I'm looking for and that's why I said when I said the roster's not that bad because I will I looked at it as this. If I take Steph off and put some one of those other names on this team he has now, would they be what would, would they have played better than what we understand in the first game? And again, it's the first game. But still, if that stays consistent, which I didn't see too much room of an improvement for the second game, if that stays consistent, I don't see any other st- – those other stars will, 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 will make that team better yeah. than what Steph brings to the table for that team. Yeah. So, in other words, to me, Steph is not that player where you want to say – from start, this is who I'm building my team around. If if I know what I have when I got a Clay, when I have a Draymond, when I have Iggy, and, and, and how my team is built, Steph is very was very important to that team. And I wouldn't say he was the leader, although he got 
the label as a leader. There was other leaders on the team who did all the dirty work as leaders that made them look good. And that's what team is all about. All right. So pretty much what you're saying, you're not expecting much from Golden State tomorrow. Only one that's afternoon. expecting much from Golden State is Golden State. I can't even say true Golden State fans because I don't know no true Golden State fans. I know guys who came along once they start winning, which is a, which is cool. Mm-hmm. But just acknowledge that. Don't yeah. you, don't you like Steph? You like Steph. You like Clay? You like Clay? But don't act like you've been this diehard Golden State fan, and it, it hasn't happened. I haven't seen that. All right, so, so you taking Milwaukee? Of course. No doubt. Yeah. I, I'm on the fence with that one still because I think they match up better with Milwaukee as opposed to Brooklyn. Brooklyn had two stars on the team that probably nobody on the planet can guard. And then at the, on the top of that, they're petty. And trust me, yeah. there were some personal statements being made in that yeah. game. So I'm expecting a little bit uh, more of uh, effort from Golden State. You know, I'm going to step out on a limb. I'm going to take Golden State tomorrow, man. I'm, I'm expecting a big game, game from Steph. <laughs> I'm not the biggest again? Steph fan, but I think Steve Kerr can make an adjustment. Kevon Looney, I think he'll play better. Wiggins, we're not going to get into that argument. Kevon Looney? Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying he's a star. What I'm saying is that. I know, he, I know you didn't mention him yeah, as a star. But, but he looks so bad based on the way I've seen him play. I think that he he can add something to the game. Oubre seemed like he was playing a little bit too fast the other night. I think, think this team matches up better. I'm not saying Golden State's a better team, but tomorrow I think they'll play better. And I'm well, gonna step Oubre's only going to get better. He can't get any worse than what he was yeah. in game one, and I know he's a better player than that. No doubt. I know that. And we Ooh. know Kerr to be a better coach than that, too. I'm not saying he's elite, but his rotations, it was atrocious, man. It, it, no, it's not. It, it's it, not, it, it really was wasn't. Bad. It was bad. I, 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 I was agreeing with you it was bad, the man. other night with that, but – I don't think it was bad. You know why I don't think it's bad? Because his rotations was easy before. No, I get that. I, 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 it's a different time now. Right. It's but different. now he's in the development stage. Mm-hmm. So now we can't be looking at. He might see stuff in practice that we don't see. Mm-hmm. And now he's trying to get those players to bring it to the game. Mm-hmm. And because they don't bring it to the game don't necessarily means that he has a wrong, the wrong rotations. He, he has a young team, and he's trying to develop them to be to play their roles. Yeah. And the only way they're going to get there is to put them on the floor. He know their quality. He knows some of their qualities that we don't know because most of these players are yeah. unknown. Yeah. So he's trying to bring them out, and the only way he's going to bring that out is through experience. And we got to be patient with that. The problem with me and you is we don't have any patience. Yeah, we really don't. Bad basketball. No, no, yeah. We'll see. <laughs> so basically, we got. I got the Bucks. Yeah. We, well, listen. Just just for the sake of making it entertaining, I'm gonna go ahead and take the Warriors, man. Mm-hmm. So me and you can have something to argue about. Red laps on that. <laughs> well, I'm more, we already got a bet going. I, I I bet this young man over here that Golden State will make the playoffs, even though you had them in your top seven in the Western Conference preview. No, I didn't. Check that video out. We can go back and check it. You better go ahead and look. Yeah. I had them tied in with all like four or five other teams in the, in the eighth seed, uh-huh. not the seventh, in the eighth seed because of the play-in. Okay. Okay. But that means they would still be – balling throughout but, the season in the deep west as you call it the what the, the, the powerhouse the powerhouse that, west that means they will have to win enough games right to even but that's what the- me counting remember i'm off steph neck mm. at the point of that episode yeah i'm off his neck and i'm a, i'm one. counting on him after game one i'm like yeah why am i doing this but yeah. i'm a, again after reevaluating and everything I'm, I'm, I'm gonna come off his neck a little bit mm. I'm, I'm watching. Yeah. I'm watching. Yeah. I know what they say about you. I know you can shoot. No doubt. But I've been told you make players better. And that's what I want to see. All right, so we'll leave it there then. Yeah. All right, so we, now we're going to transition over to the third game of the day. Now we're playing ball. Mm. We got Boston Celtics versus the Brooklyn Nets. Some more personal stuff yeah, going yeah, that, on that, there. That, that, that is very personal. There's some personal stuff going on there. Yeah. Kyrie coming back to Boston. Mm-hmm. I wonder if he's going to pull out the sage first for them demons yeah. <laughs> that, that he feel up in Boston. Mm-hmm. And so now, Kemba not there. Nope. What's the matchups? Well, 
Tatum, right? Tatum. When, when, we say, when we say matchups, you know, this is our the dream matchup because we basing it off position. I don't necessarily mean that cats is going to defend each other. You know what I'm saying? Because I see, like, for instance, Jalen Brown isn't necessarily a PG. But if I'm Brad Why Stevens, I'm putting him on Kyrie. Why isn't he a PG? Jalen Brown? Yeah. Why isn't he? I, I, or why? I mean, see, because I understand why you're mentioning him. We're talking about de- defending right now. Why would you? Why? Why you? 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 Bringing that label down as far as Brown is not PG because but, not oh, we talking about defense now. Yeah. We're not talking about offensively and all that. We are talking about defense, right? That's what you. That's what you refer yeah, to. I'm, when I refer to P, I'm talking about the point guard position, not necessarily your boy out in LA. When I say Jalen Brown isn't because we mentioned matchups, right? Right. Jalen Brown plays three or four at times, right? So what I'm saying is, we were talking about matchups. If I was Brad Stevens, mm-hmm. due to the absence of Kimba, I would put Jalen Brown on Kyrie. I know where you were going. That's yeah. exactly why I and said you say, that. And you asking why? But why, why isn't he a PG? Yeah, because you did. You said that. Yeah. You said he's not a PG because PG is known for being a, a great on-ball defender. Mm. And lately. He hasn't been a great all-time. Uh, I, I see Brown playing defense, the defense that makes all-team defense teams. Now, you know that we are in agreement. I just think we're making the argument differently. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe I should stop using acronyms. Now, I said PG. I'm not talking about Paul George. I'm talking about the point guard position. Right. Brad Stevens. Mm-hmm. Kimber is out. You mentioned that. I'm right. saying that to start the game. For matchup purposes, because Kyrie is a headache for anyone in the history of the game, whoever laced them up. Yeah. Jalen Brown, you take that assignment. You if, have to. If, if I'm coaching the you Celtics, that's who that's who I'm putting on. You have to. I'm putting him on him. You have to. And, and he's not going to stop Kyrie. He's mm. Maybe make him work, slow him down a bit. You know what I mean? Mm. Keep him around his average. Because if you put just anybody on Kyrie, it can get ugly quick. Real quick. Yeah. You get him start the dancing and get into a rhythm too early, it's over. Yeah. It's over. Man, I'm excited about that game for real, man. Because like Who's guarding KD, though? Who can? Well, I know. <laughs> but, I mean, what's the matchup? For KD, man, if you're Boston, remember. That's the thing. I, I He's playing the four. Yeah, he is playing the four. He started, he started at the four. This may sound crazy. Mm-hmm. Just to see where he at, he's at physically. Mm-hmm. I'm putting Tristan Thompson on him. I knew you was gonna say that, but I don't agree because I didn't see that in uh, Cleveland. Early, early. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it was ugly. Where they go, Tatum. Yeah. Tatum gonna have to step up. He got that big contract. That mm-hmm. what comes with it. That comes with it. Yeah. And they said you grew six ten. That's length on length. You grew 6'10", 6'10", you're going to have to... Uh, and it's not even like you you in the paint and got to be worrying about being brutal. You know, Ky- there's no stopping KD. We know that. But who can... He's going to shoot over most most people anyway. But if you can get up in him, I believe if you can stay up on him and move laterally with him, which Tatum is the perfect size for that. You know what I mean? And make his Russian shots world, more yeah. difficult. If he takes on the, the the challenge, without a doubt, I'll put him out there. And so that means... But you need so much f- from him offensively as well. That's what I'm... Now... But he don't waste a lot of... And if he don't waste a lot of energy and and can play off of his team, because mostly he want to shoot threes, he's not really attacking the basket as much as I think he could yeah, he or should. Can, if he wanted yeah. to, yeah. I, I don't think he is. But on a game like that, he needs to really focus on to win this game. I believe that Tatum is the key, which he's the number one option on the team. But defensively, I think he has to really buckle in and focus on defense in this game on KD and not to shut KD down, but to slow him down because there is no shutting him down. Man, it's so many different 
Wait. And make him work. Yeah, that's all make you him can work on him. the other end too. Yeah, that's yeah. all you can do. Mm-hmm. That's all you. Brooklyn is so deep. Just after watching that one game, you knew in the preseason. This that's deceiving to me. Yeah. But what? If you're Boston, I'm just talking about this one game because I know because I, I was saying the same thing. But then when I looked at it, they're not. To me, they're not as deep as a pit. First a pit, mm-hmm. and then we really can't judge. What Brooklyn was really all about because they <laughs> playing Golden State and Golden State didn't come to play at all, no, not at all. you know. And so, I mean, I think that this is a, a better judgment of where Brooklyn is headed, mm-hmm. even though it wouldn't be the final judgment because again, it's the second season, second game of the season. So, yeah, it's about who gonna stop KD and Kyrie. And I believe that's where it's at because when you're slowing them down, those two down, and now they're forcing trying to get their numbers because they're all about getting their numbers. When they're forcing, you, if you can get them to the point to where they're forcing to get their numbers, that's how you rattle a team like that. I can understand that. And, yeah. and Boston has the players and not just the players – but they have the coaching that can come up with the game plan to beat a yeah, Brooklyn Nets. Yeah, they, they have the personnel. I'm, I'm sitting here thinking as well because I, I mentioned Jalen Brown on Kyrie. But they have another defender that did. Marcus Smart. Yeah, so because that was playing in my mind too. I'm like, because you can let KD and Kyrie go off, but you want to slow – you want to pretty much – because even if they score 30 to 35 apiece at 70 points, right? If you can somehow contain Dinwiddie and the rest of the crew, you win that game. So do you put Marcus Smart on Kyrie or do you keep Jalen Brown on Kyrie? Well, you got to understand, Marcus Smart going to have his hands full. And not to the point where I say his hands full is like he can't catch up. I think he's going to dominate his matchup. And his matchup is he's coming off the bench, if I'm not correct. uh, He's not starting, right? Smart. I'm I'm not sure they're starting lineup based on the Kimba situation. That's the thing. I, I don't. I don't. I, I didn't watch their their first game, mm-hmm. so I don't know who actually started for them. But I didn't see. Till, I didn't start watching till the second half, actually. So I don't know who started. And um, well, it ain't about who started, right? It's, it's about when the game gets. Yeah, real. but in this case, it's real important because of the simple fact of how Brooklyn is using Levert. So if Smart is where his position is, a six man, he's coming in the bench. He's coming off the bench at the same time. Levert coming in the game. I think he's just going to wipe that out. Mm-hmm. And then, and this is why I say, are they bench really as deep as I thought it was? No, because if you contain Levert, I think you contain that whole second unit. Because Levert mm-hmm. is the one with the ball in his hands. Yeah. And then you got um, shooting guard over that came from Clippers. Um, Shamit. Shamit. He can't create yeah, for himself. Yeah, yeah. You just make him put the ball on the floor. Right, and and all the is doing is looking at, is is playing like a young Kyrie, not the same type of moves, well, but baby, he's baby. looking to score. He's looking to score, and when he gets in trouble, then he's dishing it out to other people. And I believe that Smart can play Levert straight up, and that that wipes out the rest of those players that Levert's supposed to be producing and creating stuff for. So I think that the second unit won't be as powerful looking as they look against Golden State. Yeah. There's so many different caveats, so many different ways you can go. That's why that's that's why the uh the elite coaches get paid the big bucks because tomorrow Brad Stevens has many different options. It's all based on Yeah. How he sees uh things. And they play D. They do. Boston play D. Yeah, they do. And they hear it's always a great defensive game plan. And if you can come up with a, a, a game plan to double KD without having to pay for it by by getting by giving up threes, you're great. Because you know what? If if I got to come up with a game plan, my game plan is to Kyrie get his, but KD is at average or underneath. Okay, that's that's the key. You're not shutting both of them down. It's impossible. Not. But it's great to have Kyrie doing the scoring. Yeah. Because you're going to have KD frustrated. 
because he need his need his numbers too because he, he got to prove a point he's petty remember i told you that he's petty <laughs> no doubt yeah so all right that's a great matchup that that's a great matchup mm-hmm. me personally i'm taking boston i take i'm taking boston i'm, I'm with boston. you on that I'm taking boston i got boston i got boston well who it, 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 who's starting at that point being that kimber's out that's i gotta look that up i should have yeah. did that I gotta look at that. More than likely, if, if Marcus Smart is not filling in, Jeff Teague. <laughs> he ain't gonna guy. Yeah, he can, but, but no one can. Uh, but mean, I mean, trying to contain he, him a little he, bit, make him work on both ends. Honestly, my point is this: is he's not gonna he, he, he he's not gonna make. Well, he te- Jeff Teague can. He can he can get a bucket if he can get back to maybe a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. But I ain't well seen that. I haven't game. seen that in a while. But as far as him, he's he's the type of player you starting off on. That allow Kyrie to get into a rhythm, man. It's over. And and that's why I stated the Marcus yeah. Smart situation. But we'll see what happens, man. I'm I'm excited about that game. I'm taking Boston. You said you taking Boston. Dream team is out there. Let us know what you got taken in the comment section. Yeah. You know I mean, for real. Um, we transitioning over to the fourth game, prime time. You know what I mean? This is the highlight game of the day. Mm. Northern, uh, we got the Lakers. What I'm and looking to. <laughs> got the Lakers and, and Dallas Luka. Mavericks. Um, Lakers coming off an of L. Didn't play well against the Clippers. Dallas looking very good. You know what I mean? We got them in the top three in the West, right? Yeah. Yeah. Finishing top three in the West. That should yeah, be an interesting game. Three. You had them three, yeah. yeah. Right behind uh, Denver. Um, I'm expecting the Lakers to come out and just their numbers man that, that's what i'm expecting i'm always expecting yeah that. i'm, I'm expecting always that. expecting that always expecting that do we always get it but as you gotta understand it's christmas day yeah and um again i was impressed with schroeder in game one i think he's gonna give a little bit more of he, he even with me being impressed with him to me he still felt a little uncomfortable you know what I mean? And and I think it, each game is just going to get more comfortable, more confident, understanding more what what how to play with the, the, his new his, the, the new players. But I think that they don't really not going to have an answer for a, a player like Schroeder. But at the same time, <laughs> we talking about Luca, yeah. and Luca can Luca will steal the show. I don't care who you well, playing that, against. Luca is a problem. Yo, a real what, problem. What, what I'm looking for in this game. It's not necessarily star power. You know what I'm saying? Braun, I think he's going to do his thing. AD going to do his numbers, get his numbers. Luka's going to do his thing. I think tomorrow night, mm-hmm. Montrez eats, man. I think he's going to go crazy. Mm-hmm. I believe that. I think he's going to go crazy. And I think that's going to be the biggest difference. I don't think Dallas has those dogs on their team to really – it's, the game is all about matchups when you think about it. Although you got them in the top three, mm-hmm. I don't think they match up well with LA at all. LA yeah. is too dynamic at every position when it when it comes to uh, a team like Dallas. And you yeah. never know what you're going to get with Porzingis either. Porzingis not playing. Well, that's well, there that's, you have that's it. That's hurting. There yeah. you have it. But I mentioned James Jones, and I'm real excited about that pickup for for Dallas. And in game one. <laughs> Uh, he put up a stinker. Just one game. It's on again. It's only one game on a new team. Another, he's trying to find his spots, but he's the type that can change a game. And uh, we'll see. It's game two. We we barely we 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 we're basing what this analysis off of what we've seen in game one, which is kind of weird because it's only game one. But at the same time, James Jones, J- James Johnson, he could actually change. Uh, change this game up and they're going to need him they're going to need a player like him to step up because if not and then they're going to double they're too small they're going to double luca to get the ball out of his hands and make the other players actually have to make plays yeah and luca has shown that he has trouble with small guards on him if you well, can somehow that, stay in front of him yeah you're not stopping him let me repeat you can't stop luca luca's a beast but you you can't make the game a little tougher. A.B. Bradley has proven that. Um, well, we, it's A.B. Bradley. <laughs> it's A.B. And A.B. Bradley is not on the Lakers yeah. squad this year. Not at all. Yeah. Yeah, but I think players like Caruso, 
it, it, making him work defensively as well. You know what I mean? If you got a player out there who just pounds the ball. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I love Caruso, but he is no, not. No, 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 I know no, his energy no, 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 defensively. You, you, you're it I see what he. I ain't taking yeah, it the no, wrong no, way, but I just want to make way. sure no. that the, the dream no, team is don't no, understand you are taking it the that wrong yo way. Caruso is not. We're not asking him to stop him. It's just possession you here and there. Nah, you might make nobody, that man quit. Give him his contract. MVP this year, man. Quit. There's no way in the world nobody stopping him. They go fill in this and fill in this ball spot because yo nobody stopping Luca. It's all about just making the game a little harder. For and Caruso is the honest he, he can do that. But I had no to crack that little hell, joke. Man. You but Caruso, is, listen, I don't say nowhere in hell. You know why? No, nobody stopping Luca. No, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why I you don't say nowhere in hell. Down. With all jokes aside. Because I thought the same thing in the playoffs, second round. And most pe- this, this goes beyond people's eyes of what actually took place. Because when I say this, people are like, People are going to say, get out of here. That's what they're going to say. Yo, turn that off because <laughs> Uncle Al on Team Sports is tripping. But when they go back and watch the videotape, they're going to say, oh, he, yo, I heard that before. And, yeah, oh, Uncle Al said that. Yeah, I did. Caruso was d up Harden in the bubble. He was d him up. I mean, giving him problems. And so, so, so the, I understand when you when you mentioned Caruso and, and, and the joke I made earlier and the laughing and all that, because I'm just dealing with the mindset of the people most people don't realize because they're not viewing the game of exactly what's taking place. But that's what we do here. We yeah. don't do box scores. No, don't we, do we box scores. We watch games. Don't right? mean a thing. Yeah. If you go back, you dream teamers, I'm telling you, you go back. You watch that series. But not just Caruso, though. You know who else did the same thing? Against Houston? Against, a lot of people played well in Houston. But a defense on Harden. Playoff Rondo. It's the same thing. So, And as that playoff went, I saw Caruso. He, listen, even in the first round. But that, that's a hard. All right. I get what you're saying, but Houston was, they're just so one dimensional. It's like, right. you, Luca is a different, <laughs> although Harden is a superstar, Luca is different, man. Yeah. He's, he's different. Mm-hmm. He has a scorer's mentality, but he's going to get the ball where it needs to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he can go, let him get his 45. Cool with that. It's going to lead to a dub, though. Because they just don't match up well with L.A. No, I, yeah, I see that. But uh, I don't know how stubborn is Vogel going to be with uh, Dino. Well, well Vogel got it. Well, that was just one game. But You know who Dino is, right? You tell me. You watch the Flintstones? <laughs> yeah, it's not the <laughs> game he plays. Marcus all got it for that. <laughs> Dino the dinosaur. Nah. He's a dinosaur. Ain't nobody out there for him to That's match up with. That's not the game. We said that. That's what I said. How stubborn is Vogel going to be and try to keep Gasol in the game? Because no. I don't see a matchup for him in in this Dallas game. No. I don't see it. You don't. AD has to be receptive to playing the five. Uh, why, would, why wouldn't he? Is there, there's no bangers in Dallas. Listen. When the game gets down to, when it gets real, yeah. if it ever gets there, because we don't even know if it's going to be a contest. But Trez at the five, AD at the four. That could work. Yeah. Could and, work. And this, my, against yeah. this game, against this team, yeah. Yeah, I can see Dallas. That. And listen, all the Dallas fans out there, don't get it twisted. We are not disrespecting y'all. But the game, like any other sport, NBA, NFL, is all about matchups. Yeah. And – Dallas without doesn't Pazingas. match up well with, yeah, without KP, it don't match up well with yeah. LA. Now, Braun, if you come out there with that lackadaisical stuff on Christmas Day, you can hinder the team. You know what I mean? He needs to come with the mindset either I'm going or give the ball up and let someone else create. Give yeah. the ball to Dennis Schroeder and let him do his thing. Because yeah. if you're pounding the ball until it's eight, seven seconds left, on the shot clock, and you being predictable, you dribbling, sidestep, three pointer. That's not gonna work. Don't let this team stick around. You're wasting possessions. 
Come out with energy yeah. and pace. And why is that? Because the people do what they pay, right? Yeah, is that what you stated? Yeah. That's Nobody cool. got time for you to sit around and figure it out. Yeah. I, you can figure it out. out go back and watch the videotape like we do. Yeah. And figure out oh, what you could have done better. But but if you stay aggressive mm-hmm. and, 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 and ju- just your skill set alone, you are who you are. <laughs> exactly. What in the world? I don't know. Yeah. We can go on but, and on about that. But at, yeah, but at the, at the same time, that's us on our level of understanding of the game. But LeBron is playing chess. Yeah. Playing a long game. Yeah, he's playing chess. A lot of people playing backgammon and checkers. Yeah, yeah. Some playing Monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I understand yeah, all that. Right. But, so, but, but it's Christmas Day. Come to ball. People sitting around with their families. Mm-hmm. Or there's some people that's leaving their family to come watch the game. Because yeah, their yeah, family's yeah. not into it like that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So make it worth it. Because some, some dudes' wives are going to be mad. <laughs> it is spending all the time there you know but it is the pandemic and there ain't no place to go we need to be safe mm-hmm. anyway you know yeah. and that's why it's great to have sports going on right now and that's why it's so great to have the nba back, back. Okay. you know what I mean? yeah all right so we both taking la all right, all right so we moving right on there the um, last game of the night mm. uh matchup second round three one Second round in the playoffs, mm-hmm. we got the uh, the L.A. Clippers mm-hmm. coming off a W against uh, the Lakers during ring night. And now they this they, this they so they should get rings. Yeah, back to back, right? They should get rings now because you know they, anytime they beat L.A. the Lakers, yeah, it, they, that's their championship. So they should be before the game. You think they can have a ceremony? Who knows? <laughs> sad part about it is, yeah. no, I ain't even gonna say sad part. I. At first, I was thinking. Well, first uh, off, ladies and gentlemen, they're playing the Denver Nuggets. If if you didn't catch they on, they always get disrespected. They yeah, yeah. wouldn't even mention their name. <laughs> no doubt, yeah. They they and just you got them finishing. Well, we do in uh, number two. In yeah, the West. I got them finished number two. Yeah, yeah. Second but three. I believe that Denver is about to go zero and two. Same here, because we mentioned it last video uploaded. Gave the Clippers their props, man. I like, no, I don't like, I love the fact that they implemented the triangle into their offense. Yeah. Man. A lot of easy shots for Kawhi and PG. Mm-hmm. And I just think that they they just have a little uh, added incentive, even though it doesn't mean a anything. Little? It's, it's, a little? Listen, man. It, nah. It may make them feel good for the night, but you still blew the 3-1 They're lead. coming at I them they, just like they come at the Lakers. Yeah. As if this is the finals, mm-hmm. and once we beat y'all, we better than y'all for right now, and mm-hmm. that's very important to them. And the simple fact that they lost to them 3-1 and embarrassed, and the whole topic all summer long, all the jokes, the, the, the reemergence of Pandemic P, which makes anything he do during the season meaningless now. Imagine walking around with that. Yeah, so I, they, so with all of that, um, I don't know, though. <laughs> I might pull this back. I'm going to tell you why I might pull it back. I might pull it back for the simple fact that when I mentioned Pandemic P, mm-hmm. why do they call him Pandemic P? Pressure. Because when it matters... And he's putting too much pressure on it. I believe he's going to put too much pressure on himself to prove that ah, th- I, I, mm. that was just a fluke. I, they can't guard me. But one thing about, I mentioned the triangle, implementing that, something about that offense, it brings a sense of calmness if mm-hmm. ran correctly. Right. If he stays within the flow and takes the shots based on what the offense uh, creates or that's offered, right. I think he should be all right. But like you said, sometimes he puts too much pressure on himself. He's trying to get back, blowing a 3-1 lead mm-hmm. or getting waved goodbye and, and trying to get that back in one game is impossible. It doesn't mean anything. Well, that's what he did. You got to understand. When in game one, in the first game of the season, the Lakers figured out that triangle mm-hmm. and they just started defending it better. And they kind of abandoned it a little bit. And then what happened is Pandemic P took over. Off that, huh? no, no, <laughs> no. This dude could average 40 points a game for the whole entire season. 
his name is Pandemic P until he get in the playoffs. Not win a championship. I'm not telling him he have to win a championship, but he has to play well. He can't get in the playoff, and, and the reason why the team don't advance is because he didn't show up. That, that, that can't happen. No, I respect that. Yeah. I respect that. It's funny. And if that, you got to understand how much pressure on him. <laughs> Kawhi wouldn't come there unless he came, right? Mm-hmm. If he don't show up in the playoffs this year, he out of there. Kawhi's leaving. Well, well, that, that would be the, the, uh, a hot take, but Kawhi got it too good there. I don't think he ever leaving. They willing to mortgage everything for him. No, they didn't. They did it because of what he asked them to do, not to get him. They mortgaged their future to do what Kawhi asked them to do, that's what I'm and that about. was get PG. That's why it was very important for him to resign. So they got him the person that gave up. They gave up on them draft picks for. Yeah, that was a desperate move. To, so, yeah, yeah, they had to do that. Okay, but at the same time, that's still the guy Kawhi wanted. But you, but even what? Look how we're going with this conversation, right? This is funny because you just mentioned it. We took the matchup. And start examining because the it's very important. It is important. Yeah, but Denver, we haven't forgotten about y'all. We haven't yeah. mentioned them yet. No, it's they, they listen. And this is how it was last year in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody was. They're gonna. They're gonna beat them. And the matchup is the Lakers and 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 and, and the Clippers, right? Mm-hmm. So we falling right back into the same trap again, right? And what's gonna happen, Murray? Yeah, Murray. Who's guarding me? Yeah. See, people, well, PG, they got the best defenders in the. Mm-hmm. No, no, they don't. They don't. Because Murray showed you that they can't guard him. Yo, last year, in the playoffs, that 3 1, and everybody talking about Trez couldn't guard the Joker and all that. He shouldn't be able to. He shouldn't be able to. But the Joker has 16 points. And that's right. In game seven. And those boys didn't score since the end of, what, the third quarter, right? Yeah, but do you know how many points Murray had? <laughs> oh, he went off. Yeah. Who was guarding him? Yeah. Every time I watched, every highlight that I was watching, the two best defenders, the two-way players, the best two-way players in the league was falling over each other on the ground as this dude was embarrassing them. Yeah. But nobody wanted to talk about I'm Listen, but, we but don't do that here in team sports. No tell them again. We're gonna tell it exactly how it is, even when it don't, when we don't like it, mm-hmm. when it's who we root for. The simple fact is Murray destroyed both of them, not one, both of them. And the, and the Tasmanian Devil, he was Pat Bev? Pat, Mr. Defense. He wasn't around either. Yeah, you know what? That's why it's important, you know, to to talk things out. And and when you really break down the game, it's never, well, here, we're not based on being biased. It's about, you know, just the analysis of the game. And early on, I I said the Clippers would win. But now that I think about it, I'm I'm, going to switch picks. I'm going to go with Denver. Because Will Burton is back. Mm -hmm. He wasn't there last year. Jermichael Green is an addition to their team. Yeah. Uh, He already knows who he is. Joker Zubak, it ain't no way in hell he can defend him. I'm I'm gonna go with Denver, and Mark Malone is a great coach. Yeah, but he, the, the one thing, the, the thing about it is now they got um, Ubaka starting at five. That means that the Joker is gonna be pulled away from the basket, and he's gonna have to get out there. Yep, they could, you can say people can say what they want. Mm-hmm. Like I said, we're gonna just speak of what it is. Ibaka is banging the three. He started. He was, he was a high forty percent shooter last year, and I watched him shooting the three. And when he did shoot the three in game one, he wasn't hitting the rim. It was going through the net. So that opens up that game. That opens up the game for uh, for. for, for pandemic and, and, and Kawhi. So that's that can change that can change a lot. But is uh, it enough? Because they're still gonna Patrick Patterson missing yeah, those because open shots. That's it's, it's it, it it depends on players like see now gotta remember Jeremy Grant is not there and Jeremy Grant was the one who made Kawhi work for everything. 
But who starts at the four for the Clippers? Patterson. Patterson, right? Was it? Yeah, Patterson started. You put it. Uh, Ibaka. See, yeah, that is a tough matchup because I think Paul Millsap starts at the four for Denver. So even if you switch that matchup, you know what? I'm willing to put Joker on Patterson. I put Paul Millsap on Ibaka. Yeah, I can do that. I do that. Yeah, I can do that. And yeah. it, it'll Makes work out a little bit better. Yeah. 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 I can, that, that'll work. I'm taking Denver. Mm-hmm. And then Jermichael Green coming off the bench. Um, I'm matching him up with on Kawhi. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. I think it'll have the same effect as Jeremy Grant. Yeah. Familiar with him probably through practice. And mm-hmm. he got that. He's a defensive player. He can hit the open three, but he his bread and butter is on the defensive end. Until mm-hmm. you're Doc Rivers and you try to put him on Joker, and that doesn't work. And now will Harris show up this season as far as his shooting? And then Porter. Got a, yeah. They got a lot of people over they there, do. man. But Will Burton, that, I think that's the name. And you mentioned that in the Western Conference preview. Yeah, but I couldn't – it was a shame. I couldn't remember yeah. his name. But was excited. You know, yeah. yeah. I couldn't remember his name, but Will Burton mm-hmm. wasn't there last year in the bubble, even with them beating the Clippers. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I really don't I, – when I watch Will Burton – I only see him offensively. I don't know what his defense is like. I got to start examining him and see nah, what he his defense is. He played D? He played D. What's, how tall is he? Well, Burton is 6'5", 6'6". Six, six. But he's long. Yeah, he's going to need to be long because Paul George is 6'9", man. Yeah. Paul George is different, man. Yeah. He, he when, when he's, I call him Paul. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> Paul George is a, is a great talent, man. It's just he gets in his own way mm. in, in playoff time. So tomorrow I'm expecting a big game from him. And Kawhi, but I think Denver, once again, we're getting back to matchups. That's right. why they came back three-one. They just match up better. They, they it's a good matchup for them. Yeah, because no one on their team, Kawhi can't stop Jamal Murray. It's been no. proven. Mm-mm. No, that's I don't. They don't have anybody on their team that can go. Even if they go zone, I, Denver has enough shooters. And Zubac is a seven. Excuse me, not Zubac. Um, Joker is a seven-foot point guard. Man, he gonna figure it out. He gonna dissect and eat. He gonna get the ball where it needs to be. As you stated before, Game Seven, he only has 16 points because it's not—it's not only his scoring yeah. that his gets him over ability. the home. His IQ, you can't double him. He can get his own shot. He's slow, but he can get—he get whatever he want on the floor. I think um, the, the Clippers believe that Ibaka can probably play him more mm-hmm. straight up without them breaking down their defense and doubling on him than last year putting the six seven trez on him yeah but what happens when zubak steps out 15 to 16 feet ibaka's away from the rim jamal murray wow there you go this is gonna be a great game it's gonna be a great game so yeah. we're gonna recap this first game we both taking miami right yeah miami second game we had milwaukee and golden state i just said for the i'm gonna take golden state i just think steph and them will play much better <laughs> i'm not saying they're a better team but yo maybe it's wishful thing i'm not even a steph fan but something tells me that that's not going to be who they are for the rest of the year. And Milwaukee, they they give you an opportunity to stick around. Because if Giannis getting pounding the ball 20 feet away, the downhill stuff, not using his new additions, which are playmakers, team can stick around. They can. Not- All I'm going to say is, that rookie better be what they say is or because other than that, I don't see anything in that bank that can that's yeah. gonna slow him down. Not back either, right? He can't stop Giannis. But I'm, I, it, it, yeah, I'm, is, is he playing? I'm not sure. I, I, well, if he had a foot injury two games later, I don't think he. Two days later, I don't think he's coming back. I don't know, that could have been some KD jitters. No, listen, man. <laughs> <laughs> that could have been. I ain't even gonna yeah. hold on that. Yeah, um, Boston and uh, the Nets. I took Boston. Who'd you take? Boston. Boston, all right, man. We, we, we really in agreement here. Uh, the fourth game, do I need to mention it? We're going to take the Lakers, right? Big game from Trez. Yeah. All right. And the fifth game, we're both taking the Nuggets, right? Nuggets. All right, man. This is going to be an interesting day. Christmas yeah. Day. Happy mm-hmm. holidays for man, real, Christmas. man. Yeah, man. Exciting games. NBA is back. It's still NBA tip-off week. We here at Team Sports Entertainment, the podcast. Uh, just welcome. Just, just happy to have you all. The Dream Team is with us. It's going to be an interesting and exciting season. Once again, happy holidays. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment, 
Also, what? Hit the notification bell. That's very important. That Ding. way you know yes. when we upload content. Subscribe. Subscribe. Yes, sir. Yes. Like my uncle said, once again, Team Sports Entertainment, the podcast. I'm your host, Earl Tima, alongside my big unk, Al Tima. This is your one-stop shop for Mature Sports Dialogue. Happy holidays. Once again, save your money. We out of here. Save your money. Be good. Good night. <laughs>